I wanted to go over a few of the steps to repair the printed circuit board because I get a lot of questions either on YouTube here or by email and uh, I just want to answer some of these common questions. First of all, let's talk about the relay. The relay is, uh, in the case of the heater relay, is a single pole double throw that's on most of these PC boards. And looking at the data sheet for the, the one that I recommend, which is the NTE series, uh, one of the reasons I recommend this is because it's a low profile relay. Now what that means is, you'll see the height here, it's just about six tenths of an inch high. So if you get a relay that's too tall, like this one is probably too tall for many of the control boards. Now, not all the control boards because they make them differently, but in my particular control board, this relay wouldn't work because I've marked six tenths of an inch on this relay, which is right here, and you'll see that this one's much taller and it would not fit in my control board. It may fit in yours, but you'll have to check if you're going to buy a tall relay like this. Now, <clears throat> again, back to this NTE relay, the two most common voltages that you're going to find is the 6 volt and the 12 volt. Now you may find 24. I have had people say that they have a 9 volt relay in their control board. Um, I'm not sure where you're going to buy a 9 volt relay. I've not been able to find one. Now there are ways of using a 6 volt relay and a resistor to drop the extra 3 volts but that gets kind of involved and I don't want to go through that process here of explaining how to do that. Um, but the NTE relay is rated at 12 amps right here at 120 volts and that's going to work on all of the models that I am aware of um, as far as replacing the heater relay. Okay, so here we have typical printed circuit board. Again, this is not a control board out of a dishwasher, but it's an example. All right, on this board, it's single-sided, which means there's only traces on one side of the board. Now, some boards will have traces on the other side. Uh, here's an example of a board out of a hard drive and you can see it has traces on this side and it has traces on this side. Okay, they also make multi-layer boards which have in here there are you know one or more printed circuit boards within the layers of the of the PCB itself. Um, but that's usually not what you're going to find on a Bosch dishwasher. You're going to find either a single-sided board or a double-sided board. Now, the relay, let's, uh, let's say that this is your relay here, okay? I've got, I've got three relays on this board. Uh, so let's say that this end one is your bad relay. Okay, the first thing you got to do is you're going to have to unsolder it. Now, you're going to need basic tools. Okay, I have a solder sucker. You can also use solder wick to remove the relay. Um, you're going to probably need some basic tools. I've got a little pair of dikes, a little pair of needle nose. I've got a, I've got a knife in case I need it. I have some jumper wire. In this case, this is uh, uh, 0 .0, let me turn this around, 0 .020, uh, 24 gauge, 
tinned copper wire. Uh, you do not have to buy a roll of this because you can get wire out of almost anything. Here's a lamp cord, for example, that has multiple strands in it. You can take just a few strands. Let's say we took this many. Okay. Now then, you can tin that with a little bit of solder. Oh, and always use rosin core solder. Always use rosin core solder on electronics. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is okay I just tinned that with a little bit of uh, solder and now I have a jumper wire to use now, why the jumper wire? Well, let me tell you. You can end up with a lot of things going on. First of all, if you want to use the uh, existing relay that you have while you get one on order, uh, that sometimes works. Uh, these relays are often very intermittent uh, in operation while they are in the process of failing. So your dishwasher may work and it may not work, uh, just depending on how bad the relay is. But if you want to give it a shot, you can always um, put a jumper wire on the relay. <clears throat> Let's, let's say this is your, your uh, burned pin. Uh, you put a jumper wire on that. Yeah, let me do the bigger pin because it's easier to get to. Put a jumper wire on it. And then, now I can't do this while I'm holding, trying to hold this over my camera and then run down to another spot on the same trace, which in this case, you see that trace goes from here to here. So I want to connect to the same trace. So I could come down to here and I could solder that onto there. Okay, so if you're soldering this, this relay, you may find that, looking at the bottom, that this pin here may just be sticking through a hole. Uh, no solder on it at all. The reason that that is that way on some boards is because that's the normally closed pin. Again, if you're looking at the bottom of the relay, this pin right here, which is this one, is the normally closed pin, which means that the relay de-energized, that is going to be closed. Well, that's not used in the heater circuit. Only the normally open pin, which is this one, this one right here, if you're looking at the bottom, see here's your, your two coil connections. This is your common. So this pin and this pin carries the heater current, which is your common and then your normally open connection. So <clears throat> these are called single pole double throw relays because this is a double throw. It goes back and forth between normally closed and normally open. All right, if you cannot get a single pole double throw, 
you can get a single pole single throw relay because you only need these two pins right here you only need that one connection I think they do that out of convenience uh, on the uh, Bosch boards they go ahead and put a single pole double throw relay in there even though you don't use the normally closed pin all right so the jumper wire let's say I just put that on here the reason I recommend a jumper wire is because you don't want to damage this uh, trace any more than you have to or any trace that's burned on your board um, so just connect from the pin of your relay which will often be uh, oxidized due to the heat and so you have to scrape it clean and then jumper over to another position on the same trace make sure you follow that trace down to a nearby connection where there is a another pad that you can connect a jumper wire to and that'll often get your dishwasher up and going again until your new part comes in so when you get your new part then you're ready to solder it in but okay here's what sometimes happens is when when your relay goes bad it just damages the heck out of this pad so let's say I don't know if I can even do this while I'm standing over my camera okay so let's say that your pad is completely burned up it's gone there's nothing for you to connect to here uh, in this case you're going to have to put in a jumper wire there's no no you don't have a choice uh, the pad may be lifted now if you can uh, put it back in place that's fine put it back in place like that and uh, solder a jumper wire over the top of it now here's another thing that I'd strongly recommend is you clean this off and you'll especially have to do that if the pad is completely gone Okay, so you get the idea there what I'm doing. I'm scraping the solder mask off. The solder mask is this uh, green ma uh, material that they put on their PC board to keep the uh, soldering when, they, when they're doing the wave soldering on the boards. Uh, it keeps it off of those other traces. But you're gonna have to scrape off that solder mask. And uh, then let's say the pad is completely gone. All right, let me even cut this thing off in here. Okay, so now the pad is, is completely gone. And you have to repair the board. All righty, so we're going to stick the relay back in here. All righty, so the relay's in here. We're going to solder up. okay now that I have those four pins soldered up so here comes the magic of the jumper wire uh, oh, speaking of jumper wire, this is Cat5 cabling for Ethernet, 
and if you if you have the solid cat 5 that wire right there is a pretty good jumper wire let's pull that out okay so what you want to do is strip it there we go all right it's stripped Trying to stay in range of the camera here so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I've soldered that onto the pin on the relay. And now, the reason I stripped this back right here on the trace is because I have to make a connection. To the trace. And you can go all the way down if you want, down down to the next. You can you can you can strip this solder mask off, scrape it off, all the way to the nearest connection, and run your jumper all the way down. Let's see if I can do that. Okay. sure when you're putting these jumpers on that it, the jumper does not come near any other thing on the PC board because this is this is carrying 120 volts uh, 240 in some cases if you have that type of dishwasher um, but you want to go from your relay Follow that same trace that it was on. And then you can terminate it at the nearest uh, solder pad. But you can scrape all this solder mask off and just make that soldered all the way down if you want. And that way it'll never come loose. But avoid, let's, let's say, for example, I had put this well, I can't get it over there now, but let's say, for example, I had put this to where it was near another pad or trace. Uh, you don't want to do that. You want to keep it on top of the trace that it belongs on like that. Okay, so that's what the jumper wire is for. Now then, um, you may hear on, on some of the other videos, they talk about repairing PC boards with uh, a liquid uh, PC board rep repair material. That won't work on these heater relays because there's so much current. There's uh, around 9 amps of current um, flowing through that trace. Uh, it, the liquid PC board repair material would not work, so don't even try that. Okay, so um, I'll uh, let me see if I've got everything. Oh, the other thing too, I wanted to mention. Sometimes your dishwasher is exhibiting these symptoms, and you open up the control board, and you don't find any burn connection. It looks fine, but yet your heater's still not working. Well, these relays can fail 
without burning the board. I would say 95% plus of the time, you're going to have a burn connection here because the relay gets so hot it melts the solder. And this solder pad is black, uh, even the surrounding board. I'll show you some photos later that people have sent me. Um, it'll be quite noticeable when you open your control board, but not always. There is a slim chance your relay has failed and it doesn't show anything at all on the back of the board. So just keep that in mind. Okay, all right, I'll jump over to my computer. I think that's everything here. And I'm gonna show you some examples and talk about that. All right, let's look at a few things. First of all, I'm gonna show you a repair guide that was put out by Bosch many years ago. Now it says up here that the heater relays can be resoldered to save customers time and money. Well, this didn't stay out very long before they changed their tune because resoldering the relay and just putting the dishwasher back together uh, just resulted in a follow-up call with the same problem. And they eventually came out with the instructions that look like this, which says if the heater relay has failed, the solution is to replace the module. In other words, the whole control board, because they won't replace a part on the control board. Uh, I'm surprised they even, at this point in time, are saying resolder a control board. That's usually not what the techs do. But at least in their current manuals, in this particular flowchart, uh, it says to replace the module, the control module. I'll leave this up for a second just in case you want to screenshot that. All right, let's look at some boards. Here is a disaster. This is a double-sided board. And this is so damaged that you wouldn't even want to attempt to repair this board. Uh, let's look at the back of it there. All right, it looks like that. The housing that it was in was uh, burned. The relay was totally destroyed. But this board is so damaged don't even think about it. You know, you're, you're going to have to buy a new control board. Okay, here's an example of a control board. This may be an unusual control board. It only has the two relays. Uh, but it just is showing you that they do come in different styles. So here we have the, the top side, and here we have the bottom side. Now, the top side, you'll notice over here it has, uh, this is where the uh, heater relay connects, and it says H-E-I-Z-2. And that'll say that on a lot of control boards, regardless of how they look. It'll have that nomenclature denoting where the heater circuit connector plugs into the board and so if you're ever concerned that you're replacing the right relay you can follow the traces from this connector over to the relay that that these two uh, connections go to so on this board you'll notice that the relay is here. It's, it's, it's this relay. And I know that because here is the, um, down in the corner, there's that connector on the top side, and it goes over to that second relay. 
That's the second relay. Right in here is the first relay that you see right here. So this is the heater control uh, relay right there. Alright, let's go to another board. Okay, there's an example of a burn pin. Uh, solder has come off of it. Uh, the relay is sitting. There's one pin, two pins. That's the normally closed pin. In this case, it's not soldered to anything. You have the two coil pins and then the common right here. And this is the top side of a pit, typical board with 6 volt relays. You'll see a lot of these. They'll be white, they'll be black, they can be other colors. Okay, here's an example of a board that uh, a person sent to me. And here is his burned pen right there. Okay, that one right there, and then his relay is sitting right there. Okay, there's a closer view of it right there. Okay, here's another one, same scenario. Um, on this one is not a common pin to fail on the relay because this is the common. It's normally the pin over here which is the normally open pin um, but in this case it's the common that failed. Uh, that happens, I believe, in these particular boards because this trace right here is very thin uh, compared to other boards, and so the heat doesn't escape from that pin as readily as it does from a pin that has a larger surface area like this. Uh, so this is uncommon. Uh, it's usually that pin right there. Okay. Now, notice the normally closed pin, which is this one right here is connected to the common, but that's okay, because it doesn't matter. Okay, here's another uh, relay. You've got your five pins. Again, this one's not soldered. This is the one that is the normal pin that you will see fail, but as we just saw in the other picture that sometimes the common will fail. But in this case it's the normally open right here. Okay, another typical board, just a different layout. Three relays on this board. Okay, here's another board. Here's another board with four relays, and again you'll see that HEIZ2, that's the connection for the heater connector. Here's another one, only has one of the large relays on it, and that right there is the heater relay. Here's one, again typical. burned up there. Okay, here's, <clears throat> this is actually the heater relay I removed from my dishwasher. And um, here's the common pin over here. And then here is the normally open connector right here. This is the normally closed. Now the normally closed, you're not going to have any wear on it. No, no arcing goes on there, nothing. So it's going to look great. The two that are going to burn up are going to be this connector, the connection, and this connection. Because uh, those are the two that 
go together to make the circuit. And when they burn up, then your dishwasher starts acting up. But that also causes the heat from this bad connection. You'll see all the see the black on here. That's where from the arcing um, of the contacts. And every time it arcs, it spits off a little bit of material. So eventually, the relay quits working. But while that's going on, it's getting hotter and hotter because of being a bad connection. And that heat travels down that leg and melts the solder on the PC board. Okay, here's another one. Notice right down here is... Again, this is the common leg on the relay because here's... Here's the relay right here, but it's that same layout with that narrow trace on the common. There's a closer view of it. Okay. Um, here he's got failed connection right there. It's not really black, but it's there. Here's got a better picture of it. See how that solder's burned away? And you'll get a, a discoloration in this area too. So that's another giveaway. Just look for the discoloration on the board. There's another view of it. Don't worry about it. if you see some white stuff on here. That's just from the uh, cleaning of the PC board during manufacture. That's that's not anything to worry about. That's white stuff. Okay, same deal. There's the bad connection. After the relay is removed you may see that your your uh, PC board is blackened a little bit. Uh, in this case it's slight discoloration. It won't hurt it. Just put a new relay on it. Okay, here's one that's pretty bad. Probably want to stay away from this one. Let me show you some other pictures of it here. Okay, this one is so bad that the entire trace has burned off the board. But not only that, the pin to the relay is completely burned. You see the relay is still in place. Here's the here's the other four pins right here. This pin is completely gone. So this was a pretty horrific failure. There's another view of it. See, there's the pin down in there. It's 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 just been burned completely off. Even a little bit of heat got back over to this pin. Another view of it. This board might be able to be repaired, but I would maybe stay away from it. Pretty bad. Okay. Another typical board, 6 volt relays. Another typical failure right here. Again, that's the normally open pin. There's your relay right there. Those five pins. Okay, another typical board. Here's another one that's failed. You see this normally closed pin is not soldered. This is the normally open. This is your common. Another style of control board. This one has four relays on it. Typical failure again. Okay, so here I was showing the guy how to repair his. Now, what what had happened on this board is is a solder pad had just almost totally burned off right around the pin. So what I was 
telling him to do here was to scrape off the, the coating, the solder mask, get it down to clean copper, and then put a jumper around it when you stick the relay back in. So do something like that. Again, you want to go to the same trace that it originally went to. You wouldn't want to go to, like, say, over here to this trace. Bad things happen. But this is the same trace, so you can put a jumper wire from this pin and then over to the pin of your replacement relay. Okay, so I'm, the reason I'm showing this is I get questions about this uh, resistor that is beside the relay. Some people open theirs up for various reasons and they find that this resistor's blown. Blow that up, okay. See that crack in there? Now, sometimes they look a lot worse than this, they're a lot more obvious, but uh, here's, here's what it should look like, just, you know, normal resistor. That is not a failure of the heater relay. It has to do with a failed triac that's on the board. So I get asked that question a lot, if this has something to do with the heater relay. No, it doesn't. It's completely different. Okay, here's another board. Just has three relays on, relays on it, and then here's the uh, connector for the uh, heater. Here's a guy that just showed me his dishwasher, and the reason he was showing it to me is his board looked nothing like uh, any that. Uh, had been previously shown, so he wanted to send me the picture. But here's his relay right here. This is the heater relay. And again, he's got uh, black around the normally open pin on the relay. This is another photo that was sent to me. This has nothing to do with the heater relay, but it's it does serve as a reminder. Always disconnect the power when you're working on the machine. Um, and uh, now he didn't he didn't do this. This this happened by itself. And, uh, but he just sent me this uh, kind of as an FYI. Um, you're dealing with high voltage here, so always disconnect the power when you're working on the machine usually have a breaker or some, some of these plug into the, a socket on behind the uh, dishwasher, but however it needs to be done to disconnect the power. Okay, here's um, a uh, flow chart. That is what I showed you earlier. Again, it's saying to replace the module. Now, this flow, sh flow chart involves a lot of current and voltage checks, which, if you're not up to that, don't do it. Uh, uh, just unplug the device and, and uh, look at your control board physically and see if it's got that burned relay on it. And you can skip all this, because um, this really involves a lot of knowledge in how to use meters and, and uh, take resistance measurements, voltage measurements, and current measurements. Okay, here's another flow chart that's very, very similar. Um, again, it gets down to the point of saying you need to replace your heater uh, control, mo uh, control module because of that heat heater relay. But notice that's not the only thing. You can have other issues that cause a lack of uh, heating with the water. So it, it won't always be the heater relay that's causing your dishwasher to not heat the water, but it is a very, very common thing. Alright, you're going to need a soldering iron to get this work done. So. Uh, here I'm just looking at eBay. I mean, you can go to Amazon or wherever your favorite store, Best Buy, whatever, and get 
some soldering irons. But uh, I'm just showing you an example here off of eBay. I did a search for soldering iron kit adjustable temperature. Now, I kind of like the adjustable temperature units. Uh, mine is not adjustable, but it's 25 watt. And that's a, a good wattage to have to work on these boards. Uh, in fact, if, if you go back and look at the... Um, uh, let me just pull it back up. Alright, it says here 25 watt. Uh, that's, a, that's a good uh, wattage wise, that's a good soldering iron to have to work on these boards. So if you get the adjustable, you just give yourself a little bit of flexibility if you're doing some other kind of work in the future with whatever you bought. Okay, so uh, you can see there's there's all kinds of kits available, kind of various things. But what you what you want to look for is something that has um, at least, of course, the iron number one. Um, you need it to have your solder sucker, which is this this device up here, and then you need to have it. Hopefully it's going to come with a little bit of solder um, and then a resting device, a holder, to put your soldering iron into. Now, notice this one's a really good holder. It's a spring-loaded device that you drop the soldering iron into. Uh, I have mine screwed down to a, a, a board because I'll tell you there's nothing worse than having this soldering iron attempt to fall off your desk or your table and you grab it uh, before it's just instinctive you just grab it so uh, a good uh, holder is advisable and again uh, this one happens to be a, a 30 watt iron which again is probably fine uh, but you can buy adjustable irons too. Here's a this is a 60 watt but it's adjustable so you can turn the heat down on it. If you put too much heat on those uh, solder pads you'll lift them right off of the PC board itself. It, they, they come uh, the solder Oh, I'm sorry, the copper trace comes off of the board, so you can damage the board. Now, for some reason, in this particular kit, I wouldn't recommend this kit because the soldering iron rest is, it, that's it right there in the, in the, the black right there. Um, your soldering iron will easily fall off of that. Now, what's really strange about this is they offer the other style, but it doesn't come in that kit. So this is the style uh, soldering rest that I would recommend. Something that is securely going to hold your iron. And then, like I said earlier, I screw mine down to a piece of board uh, so that it doesn't easily turn over on my workbench. So there's some, th some things to think of while you're looking for a, a soldering iron is uh, either get a 25, 30 watt fixed or get an adjustable. Get yourself a good rest uh, to, to put it in. Uh, make sure the kit comes with some uh, solder, some, um, this comes with other tools, but you want the, the, uh, some, some, a little bit of solder to come in the kit. You want um, uh, the desoldering tool, which is the solder sucker. Uh, so just, just go through and find the kit that has everything you need in it. And uh, they're not expensive. Uh, this one is uh, under $10. So um, anyway, I hope that helps.